I'm joined now by three MPs from the different parties. Julie de Bruyssen is the Liberal MP for the riding of Toronto Danforth and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources. Kyle Seaback is the Conservative MP for the Ontario riding of Dufferin Caledon and his party's environment critic. And Laurel Collins is the NDP member for Victoria and her party's environment critic. All three of you, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Um, Thanks Julie, so much. Julie de Bruce, and let's start with you. Uh, you fielded questions today in question period in the House uh, about the minister's comments. Jonathan Wilkinson yesterday told an industry symposium uh, that Canadian exports of oil could be up by 5% and gas 3% uh, to help the industry has that capacity. Are we actually going to see that? What's it going to take for that to actually happen? Well, what we've done, I mean, as a federal government, we don't have the levers to actually change the amount of oil or gas that is being produced and exported. But we've worked with industry in the provinces to pull forward pre-planned production so that we can help our European allies who right now are in dire straits. They're in need of our help for, for heating their homes, keeping food on their shelves. And so that's why we're working together with our provinces and industry to make sure that we're able to provide that help that they need right now. Okay, you know that the second question to a lot of people is going to be, well, I thought we were trying to reduce petroleum and natural gas production. I thought we were, uh, we we're trying to wean ourselves off of fossil fuels. Uh, absolutely, we're transforming energy sources, but right now there's a short-term need in Europe and they've been very clear that they require this short-term assistance. But the important part is that they've also very much been clear that in the mid to long term, what they're focusing on is to move to renewables and clean tech. And we're working very closely with our European allies to be there to help them with that. And we're we're well positioned to be able to do that. In fact, out of the top 100 clean tech industries in the world, we have 13 right here in Canada. So we have that expertise and, and that's where we're going to be helping so that in the mid and long term, they're able to become energy secure using renewables. Okay, Kyle Seebeck, uh, when you heard this announcement or this well, announcement by the Minister of Natural Resources yesterday, what do you make of it uh, on behalf of the Conservative Party? I think my first thought is, and, and what he said was that um, it's okay to do this because we're displacing Russian oil, so there's not going to be any increase in emissions. My answer to that is, well, why don't we completely displace Russian oil? Let's actually use the cleanest, most environmentally friendly sourced oil on the planet, not only because it's better for the planet, but it's also going to take away the funding from Russia, who's engaging in what we all know is an atrocious war in the Ukraine. So to me, Let's take the minister's statement and let's actually do what we need to do to bring security not only to Canada, but also to our European allies. Uh, I've seen the figures, though. I mean, accordingly, I mean, we would increase uh, oil production by 5%. I mean, this, as Madame de, de Bruyssen says, I mean, depending on the industry itself, but this could increase oil production by 5% and, and uh, natural gas production by 3% Canadian. Uh, but that would only account for 5 or 10% of the oil and gas consumption of the Europeans. This wouldn't replace a lot. And that's our total It capacity. wouldn't. And it, it wouldn't. And that's the problem. You know, uh, we produce so much LNG, and LNG is a uh, much cleaner fuel than, for example, coal. So when you're talking energy transitions, we should be transitioning off of coal to LNG, like we're doing in some steel factories in northern Ontario. That's going to save three megatons a year switching from coal to LNG. We could be the global supplier of LNG, but under this government, but we can't even get a single LNG terminal built. But okay. in fairness, that's not what the Europeans are asking for. So we need to be also clear about where the Europeans are, are seeking our assistance. And, and that is not what they've asked for. They've okay. asked for short-term assistance. Okay, I, I want to get to Laura Collins. Um, Laura Collins, uh, obviously this week's news too is your new agreement with the Liberals, this uh, supply and confidence agreement. Uh, given that, and also given your party's position, does your, does your party, does the NDP support this move to uh, increase oil and gas production and exports to, uh, to the European Union? We are in a climate emergency. We're also seeing you know the horrific war in ukraine and the impacts it's having on european countries we could create an emergency program to make heat pumps and wind turbines to send to europe we could be in a position uh, to really help them transition rapidly away from fossil fuels to renewable energy. But unfortunately, this Liberal government has given out billions of dollars each year to the oil and gas industry, 14 times the amount that it's invested in renewables, which is part of the reason we're in the situation we're in right now. I would like to see the government create an emergency program 
you know, in the same way we did during the Second World War, we sent planes and tanks to Europe very rapidly. We could be doing the same thing with heat pumps and wind turbines right now. Right, but in terms of uh, increasing our exports of oil and liqu liquefied natural gas, is the NDP in favor? Could you support this uh, or not? No, you know, the Liberals are talking about displacing Russian oil, and absolutely, we want to encourage and support countries in moving away. It is an en energy crisis, but Russian oil is being bought up by China. This is going to be burned. We are in a climate emergency. We're already seeing the impacts, extreme weather events, flooding, climate fires. It is essential that we move as rapidly as possible away from fossil fuels to renewable sources. Okay, um, if, um, I mean, I imagine you'll discuss this further at caucus, but if your party is adamant that you can't support this initiative, it's just not going in the direction you would think, uh, in the new era of this agreement that you have with the Liberals of the Supply and Confidence Agreement, this, I would take it, is not one of the confidence votes that you would uh, bring down the government on. <laughs> you know, the government uh, has a confidence and supply agreement with our party for budgets for confidence motions. There are going to be lots of uh, motions that they put forward that they're going to get support from other parties or potentially won't pass at all. Uh, you know, when it comes to moving forward on big programs, expanding our healthcare system, dental care, pharmacare, you know, they, if they want to support Canadians, we are going to be there with them. If they are going to you know, increase uh, oil production and accelerate the climate crisis, that's not something we support. Okay, uh, Julie DeBrusson, I wanted to shift focus, but it's still on Ukraine. Uh, and we saw the Prime Minister in Brussels yesterday, and he agreed in principle to increasing funding for uh, NATO, so Canada's participation in NATO. Canada's at about 1.39% uh, uh, of the GDP, the gross domestic product, uh, is our contribution to NATO the way we calculated. Uh, the target was 2%. Uh, should we expect in the coming days, uh, in the budget or in the coming days, a substantial increase, uh, and how much? What, what are you? Uh, what are you awaiting? Um, I'm looking to just to see us continue with the support. We we've been there from the beginning to support right. Ukraine, to support NATO, but in terms of to an be increase. providing providing weapons. We've been providing additional support as we go, and uh, you know, keeping your eyes on the budget, you'll see you see what comes as the next steps. But uh, the prime minister has been clear in our continued support for NATO. So a substantial increase? I know you're not going to scoop the budget, but a substantial in increase? Not going to scoop the budget. Kyle Seebeck, uh, Conservative government still never made that 2% target uh, under Mr. Mulroney and under uh, previous governments. Uh, do you think Can uh, Canadians are ready to support that? Uh, and do you think the procurement pr process can even handle increasing spending? Well, we have to fix the procurement process. I mean, all we have to do is look at the replacement of CF-18s. Uh, under the Liberal government, they restarted the, the process. Uh, we are nowhere near concluding that process. We have no vision on where it's going to go. And our armed forces have been, you know, significantly neglected under the Liberals over the last seven years. You know, sending helmets and pistols is great. I mean, they're very helpful for Ukraine. But actually, because we don't have a lot of the modern technology, uh, modern anti-tank weapons, modern uh, air defense systems. We couldn't okay. send those to help Ukraine. Those are things they actually need. So these investments have to be made. And I'm really hoping the Liberal government has got the message and they're going to make those investments in this budget. Okay, Laura Collins, I know that uh, all week long your, your colleagues have been asked about whether you can support an increase in defense spending. And the answer has been yes, kind of, depending. Uh, but can you, in, can you support a large increase in defense spending? You know, I think about some of the members of our armed forces who are, you know, doing search and rescue work who, you know, we had a helicopter come down. Uh, luckily, no one was killed, but uh, there are some big gaps when it comes to the equipment that our armed forces uh, is dealing with. And, you know, if we are going to have uh, armed forces doing important work, we need to make sure that they have the the equipment that will keep them safe in the same way that we want to keep all workers safe. Okay. Uh, um, and we're, we're looking forward to hearing what the government proposes. Okay. Laura Collins, Julie DeBrusen, and Kyle Seebeck, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks very much.